Hi, I'm David Grumping. I'm a digital transformation consultant with DocuSign Professional Services. Today, we're going to go over how to upload, tag, and send documents using Notary On Demand, which is our third-party notary solution. DocuSign Notary is built on our e-signature solution and can help you notarize documents without being physically present. It can also provide a seamless, convenient signer experience, reduce errors, increase efficiencies, and save time. DocuSign Notary On Demand is typically used to notarize powers of attorney, affidavits, deeds, lien releases, trust certifications, and many more. Today, we're going to go over a quick and simple tutorial on how to upload, tag, and send documents using Notary On Demand, as well as signing them. And if you want more and a more in-depth tutorial, you can go over to DocuSign University, and I already have a complex, in-depth implementation video there that you can view. So if you want that, you can also go ahead and go to DocuSign University. Okay, to start, you're gonna log into your DocuSign account, and it has to be a DocuSign account that is enabled for Notary On Demand or a third-party notary. And if you don't have a DocuSign account that's enabled for this product, you can go ahead and talk to your account rep or your account executive. Okay, so to start off, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to find the file that I want to send using DocuSign Notary, and I'm just gonna drag and drop it into this little gray box right here. There are a number of different ways to start an envelope. This is how I like to do it. So then I'm dropped into what we call the prepare screen. And this is where I can review the document I've uploaded, as well as add my uh, recipients in my routing order. Now, a normal DocuSign envelope, I just go ahead and enter the name and email address of whoever I want to send the document to. However, today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to send a notary envelope, which starts a little bit differently. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this upside down triangle right here and add notary group. All right. So my account is enabled for two types of notary, uh, in-house notary, which, are, which is our first party, bring your own notary product. Uh, there's more on that also at DocuSign University, uh, but today we're using Notary On Demand, which is where DocuSign provides the notaries. So we're gonna click on this today. Okay, and then I'm going to add my signer information. And we're gonna go to Sally Signer. So I've sent to Sally a few different times, and so I can click on the email address that populates. All right, within a notary session, you can have up to four notarized signers. That does not include the notary. So it can be Sally and three of her friends. They would all need to be present in the session. Today, we're gonna to keep it very simple though. In the envelope, I can also have standard signers. So let's just enable a routing order here. So I can have a standard signer before Sally and the notary group if I want, uh, but we're gonna keep it simple today. Uh, you can have uh, CC recipients uh, and signing recipients after the notary group, but you cannot have any marks or changes made to the notarized document after the notary session, it'll strip the digital certificate and the digital signature applied. So please don't do that. That's a pro tip, best practice. Okay, um, I'm just gonna edit my email subject a little bit. And then once we're done here in the prepare screen, we're gonna go click next in the bottom right. And we're gonna get to the tagging screen. Okay, once I'm here on the tagging screen, uh, I can see here, I've got tags for the notary in blue and Sally, my signer in green. We're gonna start with Sally. All right, I'm gonna go first and then I'm gonna add a text field here for where Sally's name would be. Now you could be saying, David, why don't you just put a full name field? We're not gonna remove, we're gonna remove the full name field and we're gonna put the text field here. The reason being is because we wanna be able to edit Sally's name in the notary session if we need to. The name on the document has to match the name on Sally's ID and we wanna allow a little bit of flexibility. So for the signer's name, we're not gonna use the pre-populated name field as we normally do in an envelope. We're gonna use a uh, open text field, okay? So I'm going to copy this and just put it below here, paste to location. That's a really neat little trick I like to use and put it here where Sally's name needs to be again, okay? So I've got Sally's name once here in a text field and Sally's name here. I also need a signature block right here and those are the only things that I need for Sally on this simple power attorney document. Next, I'm gonna to switch to the notary and the notary fields here are in blue. I'm just gonna scroll down. So I'm gonna add the notary signature first and I'm gonna make it a little smaller. There we go. And then I need on this day of blank. So I need a day and month. So I'm just gonna grab a text field, make it a little smaller, put it here. Smaller again. 
copy. Again, paste to locations, a little trick I like to do. And then lasso them and justify top. I'm going to move this a little here because DocuSign fields in the text box justify upper left. So we want it to look nice. Okay, so we've got these fields here uh, for the notary to enter their, the date. Okay, so next we have state of, county of, my commission expires. So these are specified fields, and these are fields that can only be assigned to the notary, um, which are pre-populated state, county, and uh, notary seal and commission expiration. Uh, we're going to go over here to find the notary fields, and these pre-populate based on the notary's profile. So uh, it's this little uh, tiny icon that looks like a piece of paper. And when you hover over, it says notary fields. These fields can only be assigned to the notary. Uh, a, a, common, a common mistake is uh, when folks are going to send, they see these all grayed out. Uh, that's because the uh, someone in the, in the routing order, not the notary, has been selected. So we want to make sure that these are the fields that belong to the notary. OK, so state of, and this will populate the notary state. County of commission, this will populate their county of commission. And their commission expiration, we're just going to put it right here. All right, finally, we need uh, the notary seal from this menu of options. And it looks like we're almost good. We need one more thing. We're going to switch back to standard fields, which is this little rectangle. And I'm going to put just below one more text field assigned to the notary. I'm going to make it optional. I'm going to put it right below the notary seal. The reason for this is, uh, depending on the notary state, there may be some state required legal verbiage that the notary needs to add, and we want to give them space to put this here. Uh, not all notaries will use it, uh, but some, some notaries will need to add a little bit here just based on state requirements. OK, quick recap. Uh, we've got a text box, not a pre-populated name box for Sally, right here and right here. Signature field, we need that. Some notary fields. Again, these can only be assigned to the notary. Date fields, commission expiration, signature, notary seal, and finally, the text box for the notary. Okay, once everything looks good, I'm going to go ahead and send off the envelope. As the sender, before I switch into the signing experience, I can go to agreements and then sent. And then I can see this is the document I just sent, and I can check and manage the status of my envelope right here, waiting for others. It was waiting for Sally. So speaking of Sally, let's switch over to Sally's email inbox, which is where she received a DocuSign notification to complete the power of attorney document. OK, switching hats now, we're going to go through the signer experience. So as the signer, I'm in my email inbox, and I can see I've got a notification from DocuSign. And this is what I receive in order to let me know that I have a document to sign with Notary. So I can open the email, and then I can go down, and there's a little bit of information here that lets me know what I'm going to need to successfully join the session and go through and get my document notarized. So I'm going to go ahead and click Sign with Notary. I'm going to agree here and proceed to an AV check. It's gonna make sure that I have good audio visual and also a proper internet connection. I'm gonna play a sound and I can hear the sound, yes, and I'm gonna talk and then I'm good to go, all right? So it's got a little bit of my information already. I can put in my date of birth, so one more, one more. 1990. Last four of my social, this is used um, to pull up my knowledge base authentication questions, also known as out of the wallet questions that I'm going to go through next. And then my home address, this pulls through already. And then I'm going to click on start. Okay, this is the first of two portions of my authentication process as the signer, and every signer needs to go through this process in order to join the remote online notary session. Again, this is the knowledge base authentication portion. Uh, the first of two, again, also known as out of the wallet questions. So I'm going to go through, this is just a demo, so there aren't real uh, answers here, uh, but I would go through and it would ask me things like where I've lived, who I've known, uh, ages of, uh, age ranges of, of people who I may know, such as my parents, things like that. And the signer needs to go through and answer uh, all of these correctly, except for one. They can miss one of them, right? So they're going to go ahead and click save and next. So I passed the knowledge based authentication questions, and now it's time for uh, to now it's time for photo ID verification. All right, so there are two ways to do this. Uh, the first is I can scan a QR code with my phone, or I can receive a text message. Uh, signers are pushed to use their phone because phones take the best photo quality uh, on IDs. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and scan the QR code in order to get a link on my phone 
to scan my ID and present my ID to the system. So I can choose to use my driver's license or state ID or passport. And here I'm gonna go ahead and click proceed on my phone, take a picture of the front of my ID, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of the back of my ID. Okay, I've successfully passed ID verification and I've gone through first knowledge-based authentication and ID verification. And the, those are the two portions of the two-factor authentication process for signers. I'm gonna click proceed. So now I have an opportunity to review the document uh, prior to joining the session, but uh, I've already gone through and reviewed uh, and it's a rather simple document anyway, so I can click I am ready. So now I'm gonna wait for the notary. The normal port, uh, time for waiting for a notary is out uh, less than a minute, and then a no notary will join me. Okay, and once I'm assigned a notary, the notary is connected, this little box turns green, and then I am brought into the notary session with the notary during a live, or for a live AV session. Okay, the notary is ready to connect, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on connect, and I'll be brought into the live audio visual session. Okay, and then I'm joined with a notary. I can see myself and then the notary up above. So the first portion, the notary is going to verify my ID. And then once they verify my ID, I'll be brought into my signing session. So I, Sally, signer, and I sign, and I sign, I put my name in again, and then I put my, entered my name, I've signed, and I've finished. Now it gets passed to the notary. So they can now, while I'm present, review the document, review my signature, and add their notarization, signature, and seal. Okay, that's it. The session's complete. I'm gonna give it five stars and, and hit the complete button. And that's it, I have a notarized document. I didn't have to leave my house or go to a bank, and I have a fully notarized document. Okay, as the sender, I'm back in DocuSign, and the session is complete, and there is a notarized document the signer signed and the notary signed in the AV session. So I can go ahead to go to agreements here and then go to my sent folder and I can find the document that was notarized here. The status is completed. I can also filter by completed if I want, but sent is just fine for today. To obtain the completed document as well as the other assets for the completed session, I can go ahead and click download. And I have several different options. Uh, here is the document that was notarized, the certificate of completion, which is the audit trail for the signed document and the notary session AV recording. This is the recording of the notary session that contains only the contents of the video cameras, uh, not the actual document itself. So I can go ahead and download all of them and store them anywhere I like now that I have the completed documents uh, done and ready to go. Okay, there you have it. We have a notarized document uh, by the signer and the notary. Uh, and no one had to go travel to a bank or uh, do anything in person. So this is the process of a quick and simple use case just to upload a document, tag it, and send it using DocuSign Notary on Demand. Again, go over and uh, see the items we have in DSU for more DocuSign Notary content, including a more in-depth implementation tutorial, including templates for DocuSign Notary, uh, as well as many other Notary assets, both Notary on Demand and first-party Notary in case you're bringing your own Notaries. Thanks again. I'm David Grumping, Digital Transformation Consultant with DocuSign.